Hi everyone, welcome to Last Book Alive. Uh, here with you on a Saturday. I am sorry that I wasn't able to upload at 4 o'clock. Um, today we're discussing A Respectable Woman by Easterine Kire. Uh, Easterine is um, a very prolific writer, poet, and novelist. Uh, she is from Nagaland, but she now lives in Norway. Um, I actually counted when I was uh, researching how many books she published, I counted she published 17, but I could be wrong. It could be more than less. Um, her book, um, The River Sleeps, which is one of her more famous uh, novels, it won the 2015 Hindu Prize for Fiction. Um, I actually bought this book, uh, A Respectable Woman, um, at the Dog Ears uh, bookstore in Madgao in Goa. Uh, that's where Easterine was actually doing a, uh, she was in conversation with, uh, I think, another uh, another person whom Dog Ears Bookshop had called, I'm sorry, I don't know their name. But I did look up to see if they had recorded it, and I couldn't find it on YouTube, that session, uh, at the Dog Ears. So if any of you know where I can find it, just let me know, and I'll link it to, the, uh, to this discussion about her book. Um, but yeah, I also actually got to hang out with her after, uh, after she... Um, did the Q&A because we were both uh, looking for a ride and uh, yeah I just found her to be an extremely uh, you know soft-spoken and, and gentle person and I had, I had a lovely conversation with her as we were uh, getting a uh, getting a ride uh, from the good owners of the Dog Ears bookshop so thank you uh, to you all um, but yeah so this book was actually published in 2019 and it was published by Zuban Zuban is actually has actually published other novels of Easterine, uh, Kire. Um, so uh, Kire herself grew up in Kohima, and uh, I feel like this novel is autobiographical, um, as a lot of other people, other writers, they also tend to base their stories on, uh, you know, people and events of their life. So I feel like it's a it's a very the reason I say it is because it feels very personal. Um, it's a very personal study of characters that I feel like the writer has known uh, very well and studied very closely. Um, okay, so just to give you a little historical context about this novel, um, before let me just have a sip of my tea. Okay. So A Respectable Woman is a novel that actually starts off with the recollection of the Japanese invasion of Kohima. Some of you may not know, but the Japanese uh, actually uh, invaded Kohima. Uh, this was during the World War II and uh, their, uh, their goal was basically um, to hamper the efforts of the Allied forces to gain a uh, uh, because they had a stronghold in uh, in the northeast, so like they wanted to hamper their efforts. Um, and I also don't just want to put a disclaimer there that I don't know too much about this history, and I've read about it in a very superficial level. So if any of you have any additional information that you would like to add, you know you can do that in the in the comment section. But what I read is that uh, the reason why they were so interested in Kohima is because it's a hill station and it, it has a very strategic location. So it was the best route between Burma and India, uh, and that's where the Japanese came from. Uh, it also had a supply road uh, that was used by the Allies uh, to transport supplies from Dimapur uh, to Imphal. Uh, Imphal is where the British and Indian uh, soldiers from the, Ally, uh, from the Allied forces had their base. So the Japanese wanted to invade so that they would, they would be able to stop their efforts, I mean, you know. Uh, so, and this information I actually got from Wikipedia, but uh, Wikipedia cited these two books. Uh, one is Lewis Allen's, Allen's uh, Burma, The Longest War, 1941 to 45, and William Fowler's We Gave Our Today, Burma, 1941 to 1945. Uh, so the subsequent battle that was fought uh, in 1944 between the Japanese and the Allied forces, which includes British and Indian soldiers, um, it, it was fought in and around Kohima, and it's called the Battle of Kohima. Um, and uh, so this is where, uh, this is when the narrator's mother, her name is Azuo, uh, her family and most other people had to flee Kohima because of the war. And the novel actually starts here. So I just wanted to read uh, a bit of it, yeah? 
it took my mother Konuo, that's her real name. She's called Azuo. It took my mother Konuo exactly forty-five years before she could bring herself to talk about the war. She was ten years old when the Japanese invaded our hills in nineteen forty-four. Their family was part of the mass evacuation of people from Kohima village to the villages of Chiesuma, Mariama, Rusoma, and Jotsoma. They spent more than two months sheltering in Rusoma, which was considered a safer place than Kohima. When we returned after the war, this is her mother telling her, when we returned after the war, we spent our first night in an abandoned house. Many families did that. The house was in a dilapidated condition, but at least the kitchen had a roof and we could cook food. The five of us joined together the two beds in the bedroom and we were so exhausted we slept immediately after eating, even though the wind was blowing in through the holes in the walls. The next morning we went to find a house and what a shock we got. There was nothing left standing. The place was unrecognizable. There was tin strewn on the ground and a few burnt planks were all that was left of our house. We cried when we saw the total destruction the war had wrought. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, so this is where the book starts. Uh, the thing that I like about this book is the intimate uh, portrayal of family life. Uh, and I wanted to read uh, one section about it just to give you an example. This is about Atsa Bonuo. Atsa Bonuo is, uh, is the main narrator, Kevin Uo's grandmother, okay? So this is how it is. The narrator is Kevin Uo, her mother is Azuo, and her grandmother is Atsa Bonuo. Atsa Bonuo always made a lot of food. Her kitchen had an earthen floor which, was, which she kept very clean by rubbing it with new mud once a week. The sink stood in the corner at the end of the kitchen where all the washing was done. The whole interior of the kitchen was very dark. There was a small window overlooking the garden. It faced east and was the only source of light. Atsa Bonuo kept a kerosene lamp near her seat and would light it when she came to the kitchen. In the house, when night fell, our grandparents used lanterns that, they threw, that threw long shadows on the walls. As the wick burned, the shadows moved constantly. Ato used to be very frightened of them, her, her younger brother. He thought they were spirits. Azua laughed when I told her about it. She had been happy growing up in that house. I read this because um, it's intimate. It's an intimate, you know, it's about the kitchen, but it shows us, and this kitchen is actually like most other homes. It's a place where a lot of activity happens in this household. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, the, 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 the thing about this novel is it's difficult to point out like, oh, this passage is so beautiful in that passage. I mean, there are passages like that that are beautiful, but the stories are very subtle, you know, and they grow on you, you know. So it's like a very layered narrative, which I really appreciate. And I'll discuss more about it as I as we continue. Okay. So, um, as I said, uh, this is a book about uh, about the narrator, Kevin Yeo, uh, but also about Nagaland, right? And it starts with the Japanese invasion of Nagaland. And it basically goes back and forth. So... It's also a coming of age uh, in 1960s Kohima uh, because that's when the author is, uh, that's when uh, the narrator is born. Uh, it's written in first person uh, and Kevinio is our narrator. Um, the running theme in this book is about her experience of becoming a young woman, uh, about her going to school, graduating, trying to find work, finding work, and then the question of her marriage, uh, which is on everyone's mind except her. Um, uh, her best friend is uh, her best friend is uh, Ben uh, Benu, uh, and she's there with her throughout the journey. Uh, one of the themes uh, that actually really uh, uh, that helps us helps root us in this book is their relationship, their friendship, um, and the conflict. I I would say the main personal conflict. One of the main uh, conflicts in the book, most important ones, is that when Benu gets married, she gets married to an abusive man. And uh, this obviously has a huge impact on their friendship, but also on Kevin Yeo. So, uh, you know, she, Kevin Yeo does raise an alarm with her mother, uh, but, you know, there's, there's a struggle there. Um, so the question is, you know, does she, is she able to help her friend? Um, you know, will, will she herself get married? Um, and 
I would just say to find all of this out, read the book. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. But, um, but yeah, they do have a very beautiful friendship. Um, and they've been friends since, uh, since childhood. So they, they see the ups and downs in each other's lives. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it, it is difficult. Uh, uh, I, maybe I can read a section of it. But um, it's basically like... Um, the thing is that um, I don't want to read it because if I do, I will give away some information that I don't want to give and I really want you to read the book. Uh, but the main theme that, that arises in this conflict between Benio, her abusive husband, and Kevino, who's witnessing this problem, is the larger community and its response to this abusive situation, which for the large part is like it's their problem. It's like a private thing, you know? Um, and uh, you know we're not her family members so we have no right to basically say anything to her or to her family uh, and then Kevin will struggle because you know she's like yeah but then this is what's happening so we need to do something so there's a conflict there now what is my take on this book um, <clears throat> what I found really interesting and and clever was the fact that Kevin is not the only narrator in this book um, so the author Easterin Kire uh, um, has given us a story where there's a narrator but then there are also several narrators within so there's a narrator within a narrator as like there's a story within a story so what happens is that through Kevin o, um, you know Kevin o un introduces us to different characters and then these characters tell their story and when they tell their story they become the narrators right um, so um, yeah, so Kevinu introduces us to her mother, Azua, who's, who's the one who narrated, narrates some of the most important events in Nagaland's history. And others are narrated by Kevinu's other family members, right? In this way, Kira is able to give us multiple narratives and perspectives that together make up the anecdotal history of uh, Kohima. You know, so I thought that that was very cleverly done, beautifully done, but also very cleverly done. And it's such a, it's such a difficult thing to do right to bring in strands of stories from different people and then to have us understand that it's not the narrator who's saying it it's the other people who are saying it to the narrator right but we're not aware of it because we're so immersed in the story it's only when i when i took it when i was analyzing the book from from you know like you know took like a wider perspective on it that i was able to see oh my god like this is what she did and she did it so subtly and she did it so beautifully i didn't even notice it until i started to study the book for this review um, so yeah, in a way, I feel like each character in A Respectable Woman carries a piece of Nagaland in them. Um, I also think that, uh, and I said this in the beginning, that, you know, it's a very personal look at, uh, you know, a, a personal understanding of people. Uh, I think Kire holds her characters in high regard. Uh, she doesn't put them on a pedestal, but she does show us their fragility and their humanness. Um, and so these are very closely, uh, closely observed portraits um, and very um, heartfelt uh, uh, portraits, uh, really. Uh, so yeah, there's a, there's a kindness and there's a gentleness to this book. It shows us how, it especially shows us how people go on living uh, after experiencing war. So I just wanted to end with this, uh, with this one reading, um, just to illustrate this point. Um, this is Azuo talking to us 